Uh, my name's Bob Hall, owner of the Bush and Vine Farm. I'd like to welcome you here to the farm today on behalf of Samuel and uh, Susan, um, the other partners of the Bush and Vine, and the rest of our family. Um, what we'd like to do today is introduce you to, a, to the farm and our nature trail and some of the activities that you can enjoy here on the farm, the different crops that you'll see as you walk the nature trail. And, uh, introduce you to a little bit of our philosophy uh, as a farm. We, we view ourselves as a sustainable farm and in that when we mean sustainable we mean that we use as a few chemical inputs as we have to uh, and work with nature as much as we can with using beneficials. Um, but much like when your children get sick you take them to the doctor and you get medicine we have to give medicine to our plants from time to time uh, because of diseases uh, and insects. And so that's a, just sort of our philosophy in a nutshell. Um, and we like to start our tour today with uh, the bees, the honeybees. Uh, one of the smallest uh, workers here on the farm, uh, but one of the most essential in pollination. If you go in the observation hive, you will be able to see the queen. She will have a green dot on her back. Um, this observation hive is for viewing only. It's not a, what we call a working hive. You may see a little bit of honey, uh, but hopefully you'll see the inner workings of a hive. Uh, you've got charts there on the wall that will describe a little to you about what's going on in the hive. Uh, the queen is the only fertile, fertile female in the hive. Uh, the rest of the females are infertile and they're all your workers. Your drones are only males in the hive and they're only for one purpose and that's to breed the queen once in their life. The rest of the time they lay around and eat uh, honey. So uh, we're going to start the, start the tour off with them and hopefully you may see some bees working the clover around the area. If you notice we like to mix clover with the oats to build our soil uh, up and it also provides good pollen source for our bees. So with that, uh, welcome to the farm. Enjoy the bee skip. Uh, you may see the beaver inside the bee skip. We'll explain a little more about those a little later on as we go around the trail. And uh, with that, we'll leave from here and next stop will be uh, the Martin Gorge and the apple trees. All right, I'm uh, Samuel Hall and I would also like to welcome you here to Bush and Vine today. Uh, I am going to take the opportunity to point out the uh, martin gourds to you. Martin birds are a migratory bird. They usually migrate down here uh, early March and they um, it's just another way that we use uh, beneficials, uh, nature, to take care of a lot of our pests. Uh, martins actually eat thousands of mosquitoes uh, each day and so they migrate down here in March and then they will be be gone around June or so. so uh, that's the martin birds. If you want to look on just past the martin gourds, you'll see our uh, newly planted apple orchard, which will be ready within the next uh, three years. We planted the apple trees back in January. Uh, they're putting on some good growth. And again, we hope to have some uh, fall of 2015, probably. Now, if you'll also look at the hiking trail here, part of our hiking trail goes along what used to be an old, what we call railroad bed. Uh, back in the 50s, 40s, 50s, and 60s, uh, a train went right through our farm and went into York. Uh, the train actually went, went to York. Uh, the peaches uh, from York County, some of the peaches off this farm were uh, packed in our peach shed up at the Bush and Vine and then they were hauled into York and put on the train, this exact train that goes through our property. And then from, from the uh, train station, they were hauled up to New York and up in the northern states. So uh, just take, uh, if you'll notice the, the land's real level, uh, it goes, it kind of, um, it's mounted up in spots and you'll still see some, some of the leftovers and we'll point those out to you uh, of, the, of the railroad. Our next stop here on the trail is down at the creek. If you'll look over to your left, uh, to the culvert, uh, where they, we've always thought that was interesting when they built the railroad through here, they um, 
mined rock, we think probably from here on the farm, you can still see where they drilled the holes in the rock, but that's a square culvert with short sides and then a top on it. Um, so we found that interesting. If you look over on the bank of the railroad, you can still find some of the old cinders where they heated uh, or they ran. Uh, the engine was operated off of coal, and so they would dump, uh, they would throw the cinders off the side of the railroad uh, from time to time. So, and in fact, you may find one or two pieces we threw here near the bridge a year or so ago. One of the issues here we're dealing with here around the nature trail are the beavers. If you'll notice, uh, the water continues to back up where the beavers continue to build dams. And we're going to show you more about them a little later on, later in the trail. So to right to my right and behind me, you'll see where they dammed up earlier this spring and uh, had this whole area flooded. Um, just want to point that out to you. And, uh, we'll show you more about the beavers here in a few minutes. If you'll notice, we have uh, some fence in parts, on long parts of our uh, hiking trail, and the fence is for our beef cattle. We have beef cattle that uh, range on some of our grassland that's not suitable uh, for cultivating other crops, and so we just have pasture land here for our beef cattle. Um, so maybe take a moment to stop by and, and see if you see the beef cattle grazing out in the pasture, and you may even see a, a few baby calves out there uh, this, today. Um, along the hiking trail, you'll also see uh, oats and clover. The clover is uh, um, the red stuff. Many people ask if it's strawberries. It's actually what you call crimson clover. We mix crimson clover with our oats and we plant them in the fall. They're a good winter cover crop. It's good for your soil. It, um, the clover takes nitrogen out of the air and puts it in the puts it back in the soil so they're, they're, they keep your soil in place and then they also put nutrients back in your soil. So we will, um, some of it we will harvest for hay and then some of it we will uh, till into the soil as a green manure crop. So um, that's, that's our oats and clover and you'll see that along our hiking. Beaver pond, um, we about ten, eight to ten years ago, we started noticing um, some animals were chewing on trees here at the farm. And shortly thereafter, we saw a beaver dam and a beaver lodge. Um, so they've just been a, um, something that we've kind of had to deal with year after year. Um, you'll never completely get rid of them, so we just kind of tried to uh, work around them. So we just kind of left their pond. We put up some duck boxes, some wood duck boxes to. Uh, for wood ducks to uh, raise little ducklings in, and so we're just kind of creating a wildlife habitat. Next up on the trail today, if you're over to your left, uh, beside the tunnels, you'll see um, trellised uh, blackberries. This is a new addition to the farm this year. We expect to start picking those late May, all of June, all of July. And so we welcome you to come back. We will allow pick your own on that. Um, and we'll have plenty of those available this year. Uh, that's a new addition for the farm this year. Okay, just a few steps uh, on up the trail. If you look to your right, you see a big pond of water here. And you'll look across it, come up uh, to where the tires are. You can actually see the lodge where the be uh, beavers uh, den. And you'll see another lodge over behind that in the background. Uh, but we think this is primarily where uh, most of the beavers are staying. They travel up and down the pond from these two lodges. Okay, coming up the hill on the dirt road, you'll notice our blueberry patch. We have the um, different blueberry varieties uh, named. Um, and we offer pick your own blueberries. They usually start around Memorial Day weekend and run through about mid-July. Um, we have uh, lots of different varieties, so we'll start picking on one variety, uh, in specific is O'Neill. We start picking them around Memorial Day weekend, and then we finish up with the uh, 
rabbit eye variety like Tiff Blue and Powder Blue. So um, looks like it's going to be a great crop of blueberries this year. So come back and see us again to pick your own blueberries or we also offer them in our stand uh, up at the bush and vine. Okay, now we're um, just up the hill from the blueberries. We're at the peach orchard. Um, we have about 25 different varieties of peaches. They all come in at different times. We start picking around June 1st, and we pick all the way through early uh, September. Um, so we have about 25 different varieties. Start with one variety, and and they uh, they stay ripe or they ripen. Um, we pick off one variety for about 14 days. To the opposite side of the dirt road, you'll find our housing for our workers. Um, they stay in the, the White House here. And we appreciate everything our workers do for us. We want to close out the tour today to uh, show you where we start things out in the spring in the greenhouse to the right. We start all our vegetables in there in the spring. Uh, and then to our left, we're coming up on this year's strawberries main strawberry crop. We like to rotate our field. Uh, not come back to this field, but about every fourth year. Um, we rotate with the oats and clover and, and uh, beans and peas and corn in that rotational mix. And so we're, we're coming up on this year's strawberry crop. We'll pick those up till early June, then we will kill them. And uh, that'll be this year's uh, fall uh, pumpkin gourd crop. So we'll get a second crop out of that plastic. There's an individual drip line or water line for each one of those beds. So it's quite an expensive venture when we put the plastic down. Um, and so we want to try to get at least uh, two crops out of it. Thank you for coming today and I hope you've enjoyed your visit and we look forward to seeing you back many, many more times this year.